Good morning. It is a chilly, windy, gloomy fall day here. Is it fall yet? Oh yeah, 21st, fall day. There you go. Um, it didn't really rain last night, which means we might run soybeans today. But first, we're going to fire the dryer up. Bill did run it a little bit last night. And um, we don't have a ton of wet corn left, which is good. But there is some, and we need to get it dry. All right, so I'm kind of just sitting here babysitting the dryer a little bit this morning. Um, we're drying out of the wet bin into the overhead, and the reason I got to sit here is because we don't want to overfill the overhead. Not a huge deal, but I'm just kind of sitting here watching stuff. I'm really playing on the computer, analyzing stuff. Found something cool I wanted to show you guys. All right, so this is uh, one of those soybean fields that we already did, the first soybean field that we did. And uh, this strip right here that's kind of grayed out and gray behind it, doesn't have a yield map, that's our March beans that we haven't harvested yet. Um, so we're looking at the rest of this field here. And um, I'm, at, I'm overlaying some application data. This one is from 8.5, and that tank mix is my insecticide, that lamb cap that we sprayed uh, for aphids. And so when I select out the center of the field, we take the endros out of uh, consideration here, and we look, that insecticide made the yield go from 72.55, where we did not apply, up to 74.67. That's a two bushel yield increase for a chemical that cost me $1.68 an acre. Yeah, that one worked, that, that paid. Uh, the areas that still highlighted is the area that did not get sprayed, and then when I switch it, that's the area that did get sprayed. So I left a couple of strips there uh, with the insecticide that did not get sprayed. So um, interesting to see, good good to see. Uh, that, that was a worthwhile application. Let me check on the fungicide one now. Well, looking at this map, which is the same thing, I just changed the, um, the second operation to our 720, July 20th uh, Maravis uh, Neo fungicide application. Uh, the numbers are about the same which makes me, it makes it a little more complicated, um, but it's two, 2.4 bushel difference, which more than pays for the chemical. So um, that'll be an interesting one to watch as we move forward and um, see what kind of a difference I made in some of the other fields. But uh, uh, with the overlapping fungicide and insecticide passes in different areas and stuff, it does sort of complicate um, making the data easily uh, discernible like this, I guess. So, either way, good numbers. I'm going back and looking at some of the corn yield data and stuff, and the uh, the early fungicide that I put on just made an incredible difference. Like this is one of those fields that Dad was running the combine in, and I'm looking at it, and inside the selected zone, 205 versus 224, like that. That's 20 bushel difference. That's just incredible. 20 bushel times. $5 corn, right? That's That makes a big difference. Oh, I was doing a little sweeping and cleaning up. We've got, um, we got a pile over there that eventually we'll get our manure spreader hooked up and use that. Uh, our last light went out, so our bin is just about empty. We'll come over here and bang on the sidewall and see what. Empty, empty. Right there, so it's right on the seam. It might get down to about here, so. Uh, we're about out of wet corn. The dryer is really cranking out some bushels. Uh, 1265. It was up to over 1300 there for a little bit. Uh, that's bushels per hour. That's that's good. Yeah, that's that's all good. Okay. Well, the um, chemical and fertilizer salesmen are out in force this morning. We've had a couple of meetings there. Um, I'm hoping to get better application maps from our fall broadcast fertilizer, and so we were talking about that a little bit. And I think I'm going to get them which is good. Uh, the dryer is done. Phil's hauling dry corn in. Dad just left to go start combining. It's uh, 10 o'clock, so he's gonna see how that goes. I am gonna go plant wheat, because we can. Off we go, planting wheat with our new air seeder. This is what we bought it for. We've ended up using it for several other things with the double crop beans and the cover crops. 
but we bought it for planting wheat. So, um, so far everything seems to be working well. Phil did do a little bit yesterday and um, didn't think his rate was getting quite right. He put in like 1,500 pounds of seed, which was enough to plant 12 something acres. And he planted 17 something acres. So we got it a little light. So I've adjusted it up by what I feel to be the appropriate amount. We'll find out when we get this planted out, whether or not we're right. We should have enough to do 25 acres in today. So, um, I don't know. We'll see. We're going to plant until it's gone and everything else is working good. He got the depth and the uh, down pressures all adjusted the way that they need to be. So it's all good. Oh yeah. Dad called me. He said the beans were like 16, 17% and a little tough. So he, he quit. It doesn't look like we're going to get to really run any beans today. Uh, we could use some sunshine. Doesn't look like we're going to get any sunshine. Well, according to my monitor, I'm planted 25 acres. I'm not out of seed yet, so we're going to go and look and see how much we've got in there yet. We're getting it on a little light still. Oh, that's kind of a lot. Okay, so we're still getting it pretty light. I'm going to, I'm going to crank it up a little higher. Um, that's the problem with an air seeder like this where you can't count the seeds because you're putting so many on so fast. Uh, you just can't count them ac accurately, so you don't have a real good idea of what your population is. You can just kind of put in a known amount and see how far it plants to know if you're getting the right, and we're not. But that means all that we planted so far is we planted too light, not enough seeds per acre, and there's not much I can do about that. So you can see the monitor does give me a number of seeds per acre, 864,000 is what that means. But it's not reading them all because we're shooting for 1.6 million uh, seeds per acre with wheat. Really what you do is figure out how many pounds you need there. That's about 120 pounds to the acre. So two bushels to the acre is what we're shooting to plant here. But the monitor doesn't read out in pounds and it doesn't read out accurately enough to get that many seeds. I know we're planting more than 860,000. Um, we're probably planting about 1.4, maybe 1.5 million. So we're light, but not that light. Um, so we want to keep adjusting it. This is kind of a good reference. The problem is, as I speed up and slow down, that number also changes because uh, it, it just can't read them fast enough. There's just no way. Uh, the thing that we should need to do, and probably will do for next year, honestly, is to put a scales on the seed tender. So there's a company that makes a scale that isolates the box, the yellow part, from the rest of the tender, and then it has a scale, and you can re use that, and it'll obviously change as you plant seed out, and you can adjust it much faster and much more accurately if you have one of those. Uh, we don't right now, but we're doing the best we can here. So we'll keep um, keep playing and adjusting it as we, as we can. The nice thing is our seed tender has a scale, so we know how much seed we're putting in it when we put seed in, um, but we have to plant that out and then divide that by the number of acres in order to be able to accurately make adjustments. So yeah, we're getting there. Okay, well, I finished this side of the field. We made it over there to the fence row, to the trees. Um, everything that's left up here is either not harvested yet, the, my March beans, or it's the three passes I made on the north side of them there that I think we're just going to wait until we can plant the rest of it and not mess with it right now. I don't know. I'm not sure what to do exactly or what the best option is. And Dad doesn't have enough harvested in the next field to mess with going over there and planting that right now so did i tell you he he decided they were too wet yeah i think i did so anyway um we're done for now i guess i ended up planting about 30 acres the the box on this drill is just about empty i didn't go out and look but you can see where it's the line is through the side of it and um there's just a tiny little bit left in the one side so it's essentially empty so we planted 30 acres instead of 25 that we were supposed to, which means 
we're getting closer on the rate, but still a little bit light. So uh, I might turn that up just a little bit more when we fill it up again, and we'll check the next time, but we're closer. That might be the only video you get of me planting wheat this year. Uh, I know in the past you guys have been asking to get videos of planting wheat or how our double drills work, and I just don't do it very often. It's not uh, it's not something that I, am, I, I do. Uh, usually I'm in the combine when we're running beans, so... Um, hey, you got to watch us plant wheat a little bit. All right, I'm heading back up to the farm. It is lunchtime, so I'm probably going to go get something to eat, and then... Um, Maybe we'll go try some beans again. I don't know, we'll see what else is going on. Oh man, I just pulled up here and there are three vehicles from our internet company. Uh, I'm gonna explain this to you guys a little bit more here because I every time I talk about internet, I get a bunch of suggestions. So I'll, I'll yeah, just a minute. They're leaving. Said they were gonna do some adjusting on their antennas. Okay, so we have an internet service provider here that is, uh, I don't even know what you call it, but it's almost like they create their own little uh, cell phone network where they have towers that broadcast their internet signal out wirelessly to the individual houses who have a receiver and that's how you get their internet service. Well, they have one of their towers up on our grain leg. That big box right there is for all their power equipment and everything and, and whatnot. So it, it runs from here and it goes out clear up to the top of our grain leg. Up there, you can kind of see right there is one of their little old transmitter deals and they got three or four of them up there that go to cover the whole 360s around, right? So the reason that I've been pretty hesitant about signing up for Starlink internet or something else is because the internet that we do have is free. They use our tower, they give us free internet. So it's hard to complain about free internet, but it, I still need it to work, otherwise it's no good, right? Um, so anyway, so that's what we have, and uh, when it works, it works pretty well. It's it's not the fastest. I think we get about 25 megabits per second, uh, which is supposedly the highest that their system is capable of doing. About six months ago, we were getting five, and it was brutally slow, especially since it didn't work most of the time. Um, we've gotten most of those internet problems that I had earlier in the week, or last week, or whenever that was, figured out. Everything seems to be working really well now. Um, that said, while I get 25 download, I only get three up, and it takes forever if I have to upload a YouTube video from here. So when my wife and I build, or when we finish and move into our house down there, I have several options. One, I can wirelessly shoot the signal that we get here for free down there. Problem is you're putting more users on an already sort of slow network uh, connection. And uh, or I could we could sign up for our own service. We'd have to pay for it, and it's not cheap—60 bucks a month or something for 10. Or I don't even know what their prices are, um, but it's not super cheap, and it's not super good service either. Or I could sign up for Starlink and get really good internet down there, which is kind of what I'm leaning towards. Uh, my brother-in-law signed up for it. He's up in the northern part of Michigan, and I was kind of waiting to hear his reviews and what he says about it before I signed up. But anyway. That's our internet situation here. It's it's good, it's free, but it's not great. Part of the problem is the system is out there at our grain system and we need internet in our office and our house mostly. And so there's actually a buried uh, uh, ethernet cable that comes into the shop, into the office. And when I was moving stuff earlier in the week and having problems, I took the router from the office and moved it out there and set it on top of that gray box of theirs and it didn't work and it turns out i had missed a box that they added at one point that i was unaware of and i had set it up like that before and it worked but anyway it works now i am back from lunch we had actually a little bit of sunshine there for a brief minute um it's now two o'clock and uh things have dried out a little bit dad went to berkey to go work on a barn a little bit more he was buttoning some stuff up down there before we get our four inches of rain that's supposed to come tonight We'll see. Uh, I'm gonna go over to the soybean field, crack a few beans open, see how dry I think they are. If they look like they might be dry, we'll stay there and combine. If not, then probably treat wheat. So when we're looking at soybeans, um, it's fairly easy to tell whether or not they are uh, ready to be combined or mature or dry, I guess. Dry is what we're looking for here. So what you wanna do is take some pods and see one if they will crack open, which this one did. Let me try that again so that I can actually get it on camera. 
kind of pick it and then see if it breaks apart, which they do. So that's a good sign. And then you take the beans. Well, look at that. It was a four beaner. How about that? Um, oh. So then you want to take the beans, pop them in your mouth, and crack them. Yeah. If they crack and they crunch, then they're dry, ready to go. If they don't, they're probably a little wet. And the pods crack open, so we could combine them fine, but the beans did not crack. Eh. A little bit. It might be 15. Is 15 too wet? 17 was too wet. How about 15? I'm not sure. We might try it around here. Bleh. Why not? If Dad can make a round when they're too wet, so can I. They can't be wetter than they were this morning. If they're 15 or under, I'll go. We'll combine them. Let's try it. Did you see that? That's dust. We've got dust. Dust is good. That means they're somewhat dry. Um, well, it says 14.7 here, so we'll combine those if that's the case. 14.6, it was 15.4 when I started, but I think, I think we're going to go here. Some good beans. The field average is not nearly that good. I don't know. Dad had to do a lot around the trees and stuff over there that really brought the average down, so I don't know. We'll see. Some of these look good. Uh, I would rather combine 15% beans than 9% beans any day, and I'm going to do the math on that and figure it out and then explain to you why. All right, so this is going to be just a little bit difficult to explain. I'm going to do my best, but you're going to have to try and go with me and follow me along. So ideally on soybeans, we want the moisture to be 13%. And what that means is that 13% of what we harvest, the soybeans, is water, right? And so a bushel of soybeans weighs 60 pounds. That means in every 60 pounds or every bushel of soybeans, there is 7.8 pounds of water water, 52.2 pounds of everything else, dry matter, okay? So we're going to break this down into dry matter and water, and ideally, for every 52.2 pounds of dry matter we have, we sell 7.8 pounds of water to go with it. Now, if our beans get to be, we're going to use 10%, because I think it'll be a little easier math, but if our beans get to be 10% moisture instead of 13 we still sell 60 pound bushels, but in that, you're gonna have more dry matter and less water. So let me do that math real quick. Well, that was embarrassing. That was pretty easy math, wasn't it? 10% of 60 pounds is six pounds of water and 54 pounds of dry matter. So essentially what we've done there is reduced the amount of water that we're selling the elevator. Um, now, if we wanted to sell that same 52.2 pounds of dry matter at 9% or at 10% moisture and if that how do I explain this if we if we were selling that 52.2 pounds of dry matter that's ideal for 13% as dry matter how many pounds per how many total pounds would that be if there was um if we didn't add the or extra dry matter in is what I'm saying, right? So essentially, essentially it would be the 54 minus 52.2. So 1.8 pounds we're losing per bushel uh, of, of water weight that we could be selling of water. Yes, that's what I meant to say. Okay, so here's another way to think of it, and I think this explains it pretty clearly. So let's say that you have 60 bushel per acre soybeans at... 13% uh, moisture. Ideal harvest conditions, they're 13% and uh, they're averaging 60 bushels per acre. So that's 60 bushels per acre, that's 3,600 pounds, right? 60 pounds per bushel times 60 bushels is 3,600 pounds. Of that 3,600 pounds, 3,132 would be dry soybean matter. The rest would be water. Now if those beans were drier, you would need to use more of that dry matter to make up each 60 pound bushel, therefore would be selling less water to the tune of, you would only be selling, you would only have with the same amount of dry matter, if they were 9%, there would, they would only add up to 3,480 pounds. So you lose 120 pounds of water in that 3%. And 
that's two bushels per acre. 120 divided by 60 is two. So what you're basically doing, if you're taking uh, 60 bushel beans at 13%, you wait till they're 9% moisture, you've only got 58 bushel soybeans. So you're losing two bushels per acre at $12 beans, which is somewhere close to what it is now. That's $24 an acre in loss. That's why we don't like harvesting ultra dry soybeans. Now, sometimes there's nothing you can do about it. The beans are just dry. They'll change throughout the day. You can start in the morning, they'll be 15 by five o'clock at night, they're 10% and there's just nothing you can do about it. And so um, the, the flip side of that as to why 15% is better than 10% or 9% is what are they charging us for having too wet of beans? And I'll have to look up the chart to see what it is, but even if it's 10 cents a bushel, uh, we'll do the math on that, or I'll, I'll look it up and we'll do the actual math. But um, you, you can afford to give up a little bit of that price to gain two bushels per acre. Understand? This is fun though. Okay, so here's the math on the 15% beans. I looked it up, our local elevator um, has a discount schedule posted that shows an eight cent discount, drying charge basically, for harvesting 15% beans. If it's 14.6 to 15.0 moisture, they charge you 11 cents per bushel. Fine, let's go back to our 60 bushel per acre example. 60 bushels per acre times 0.06 drying charge means that it will cost you $4.80 per acre. $4.80 per acre, <laughs> okay? I also looked up the cash price of beans. It's 12.32 right now. Two bushel per acre in loss due to over dry beans <coughs> times 12.32 is 24.64 an acre you're losing in decreased yield. Combine your beans at 15, guys. You're way better off. Go get it while it's still wet. So, uh, my, my Teddy Graham's box made a good notepad. That's the math on it. I hope that makes sense. If you have questions, leave them down below. Meanwhile, we made two rounds and it's raining starting to sprinkle so that's gonna be it we're gonna we're gonna finish this round and park it the problem with that calculation of the math that I just just did it two things one you can't control the moisture of the beans you can control when you harvest them to an extent but they're gonna dry so fast you can't help but dry but haul in over dry beans sometimes we're doing it right now from the ones we combined two days ago two days ago yesterday two days ago anyway um, the other thing is it's it's not a visible loss, right? So when I haul in 10% soybeans, there's no thing on the spreadsheet or on the, the way slip that says, oh, you lost X number of bushels because you hauled those dry beans. They don't tell you that. When you haul in 15% beans, it says right on there, drying charge or moisture discount, eight cents per bushel, and it's a real loss that you can actually see. So um, people tend to not think about the, the bushel loss from over dry beans, they just want to see, or they just see that drying charge one and think, I don't want to do that, I want to avoid that. Um, that's that's only part of the story though. And before you all say it, yes, I know that there is a moisture correction and a shrink factor involved um, with uh, hauling in wet grain, but that's already accounted for in this formula because I was looking at it from a dry matter standpoint. So when you haul in 15% beans, you're actually hauling them less than 52.2 pounds of dry matter per bushel. Um, and I'd have to do the math to figure out how much less, but they're correcting it back to get the same number of pounds of dry matter. So I've already got that accounted for. This is a bit of a risk, but the sky is clearing that way. I don't see any fresh raindrops on my windshields, windows, any of them. We're gonna try another round. One more round, I'll have the grain cart full. So we're gonna try another round. Uh, one more component, sorry, I keep adding on to this dry beans thing, but one more component that I'm gonna throw out there is uh, field losses and header losses. When beans get overly dry, you end up with a lot of shatter loss. Ugh, trees, trees. Anyway, uh, you end up with a lot of shatter loss. The pods will crack open at the head or the reel when they hit them and the beans will go flying and you'll lose stuff before you can even get it in the combine. Uh, that's not accounted for in my calculations that I was just doing. That's, that's just part of the deal. When stuff gets too dry, it's harder to harvest. Um, 
I know a couple of you have mentioned or said things in the past to me about putting an air bar on this combine uh, and this head. I would love to try an air bar. I've never run one. They're not really very common around here. You see them once in a while, but um, yeah, I just, I've never run one. I don't know. Another thing is that there is a company that makes some brushes to go on that center part. In normal conditions, they're completely unnecessary. Um, but when you lift up on the ends, you do get a few beans. You can see a few beans down there on the feeder house. Would it help that? Yeah, I think it probably would. Is that a big enough problem to justify? Would it cover the expense? And it's not that expensive. So I, you know, something that we could do and I would look at doing maybe in the future. I don't know. Yes, yes, the things would probably be helpful. Do we have them all? No, we don't, sorry. Well, one more round turned into another one and another one, and now we're almost done with the field. There's only about seven or eight acres left. Phil's here, he's unloading the cart for me and about got a full truck load and gonna take them in. And we're gonna finish it, I hope, and we'll see. Um, I just opened my crackers to have a snack. These have gotta be the saltiest crackers I've ever had, holy cow. These crackers are making me thirsty. Oh, no, I can't do it. Whoa, those were bad. Appears to have just been the first half dozen or so in the tomb. All right, that's enough cracker talk. Combine and beans is way cooler. Phil just left with the truck. He is a half a mile that way. Literally hasn't even made it to the next stop sign. Said the road's wet down there. Yeah, it rained there, not here. Good for us. Keep moving. Check it out. We're gonna get this one done. Awesome. We're gonna jump right across the road over there. Those are also our beans. And uh, finish that field. There's only like nine and a half acres there, so that one will go quick too. Well, this field has some really interesting stuff happening on the yield map, and I can't explain any of it right now. I have no idea what caused this break or that break, or that break. Uh, we're gonna have to look at our uh, application maps and records and stuff and seed varieties, seed treatments, all that stuff and see. But something caused some major yield differences in this field and it's very interesting to me. I wanna know what did it because the green areas were awesome beans. The rest of the field was not so great. And I mean, we averaged 59, but Fascinating. I want to know what happened here. I just heard something go in the combine. It kind of sounded like a a rock. It, I don't know. It didn't really sound like a rock or a slug or something, but it made the slip clutch on the feeder house go for a second. I'm going to dump the rock trap and see. This handle here opens a door there where if you get a rock or something in, hopefully it falls into a little void there rather than going through the machine. I don't see a rock. Curious. We'll shake the dust off a little bit, close it back up, keep going. Well, dang it! Two things. One, something broke on the cutter bar right in the center and I'm leaving a little trail and it's driving me crazy. Two, it started to rain, like heavier raindrops, actual raindrops. I have four acres to go. Dang it! So we gotta, we gotta fix this cutter bar though because I can't run it like it is. Uh, I don't know if I have all the pieces I need with me. I've got them at the farm, which is fine. It's close. But it might be raining too much before I get, get it fixed to finish my four acres. Dang it. Well, I must have hit a rock right here in the center because it broke both teeth on this knife and this one on the bottom that's attached to this side. It actually broke the cutter bar. So it's going to take a minute to fix this one. I'm pretty sure it's this piece that I need. And... That one knife section that I just had, what did I do with it? It's somewhere. I got it fixed. It is, it, it did rain some, not a ton. We have four acres left. We're gonna finish it before that rain gets here. Hurry up, hurry up. We're down to 1.3 acres. Raindrops. Almost. We're gonna make it. We're gonna make it. Not a minute too soon either. These beans weren't very good. Not very good at all. Oh, 
Like I said, not a minute too soon. So we're gonna tarp the cart and leave them set here. We're gonna unhook the head. I'm gonna run this combine home, put it in the barn, and um, that'll probably be it for today. Feels good to get all of this stuff done. So when it does dry out after this rain, um, we'll be able to get these planted to wheat right away, which is, is good. They're seriously calling for like four inches of rain tonight and tomorrow. I don't know that we're gonna get that, but that's kind of what they're saying. So we will see. Um, we've got a really good start on things. If we do get some rain, it'll be fine. Dad's sitting over there in pickup. He says to me, Bollinger's, which is the next field. Let's go. Uh, no, <laughs> we ain't going tonight. Tarp the cart, Dad. It's raining. Okay, guys. Well, the rain really didn't add up to much here, but it's wet now. It's supposed to rain a bunch. Who knows whether we'll get that or not. We will see. Um, tomorrow, weather dependent, if it's raining like crazy and we're not in the fields, which I expect to be the case, um, I do have some more wheat to treat and I really, really, really need to spend a day in the office um, catching up on some paperwork and computer stuff and records and that needs to happen. So that's kind of my plan. I would love to take tomorrow and go down to the Farm Science Review but it's supposed to rain all day. And I don't really wanna walk around the farm show in the rain. So that's probably not gonna happen. So maybe on Thursday, we'll go down there. I was kinda of wanting to go tomorrow because Brian's supposed to be there tomorrow. He probably won't be if it's raining anyway. Oh well. Anyway, we'll see. I don't know what the next few days are gonna be like, but it looks like a little bit of a break here. Uh, and like I said, depending on the rain and how much we get, depends on when we get back into the fields. I would not be surprised if we don't get that much rain out of this and it's a bust like you know because usually when the weather people start calling and telling us we're gonna get three and four inches of rain we end up with a half inch to three quarters and it's nothing uh, and as dry as we are right now anything less than two inches will keep us out of the fields for exactly like one day uh, it won't take long for it to soak in and for us to be right back at it so maybe maybe two days for beans corn we could probably go quicker um, but anyway Thanks for watching everybody. We've had one heck of a good run here to get started with harvest early and uh, we're in great shape. So have a great rest of your day. I will see you again tomorrow, most likely. Thanks for watching.